we proceed. Okay, perfect. Do, uh, by etiquette, do you mean, so I'm sorry, by etiquette, Sarah, I think you mean the Zoom etiquette. If you would like to do that, I would appreciate that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right, then I will start off with that and then we'll go into the agenda. So good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for attending uh, the Special Heritage meeting this evening. Um, all of you did receive um, an email from myself prior to the meeting with regards to uh, our Zoom etiquette, as well as uh, with the Zoom link that you have used this evening. So I'm gonna start with the public members. Again, thank you so very much for attending. Um, again, we're just asking that uh, you remain on mute with your video off during the uh, entire process of the meeting. Should you have any technical difficulties, please do not hesitate to go out and then come back in. For those members who are delegates this evening, um, again, uh, we do ask that at this time, your video and yourself be on mute, which you are, so we appreciate that. Um, when we do get to the item five public presentations um, and the chair calls upon you, we are asking at that time for you to unmute yourself um, and present your webcam should you wish. You will have five minutes to present to the committee. Um, at that time, uh, there may be questions and so on and so forth, but when your time is up and when uh, the chair does move on to the next delegate, please uh, mute yourself and take your video down. As for our members, thank you, welcome, hello, nice to see you. Um, with regards to this evening, when we are moving or seconding um, any items that are, uh, any motions that are on the chair or on the floor, sorry, please put your hand up in front of your video. Uh, Mr. Kokove, I understand we're not using video for yourself, so um, I will ask you if you are yay or nay on the motion, so please advise of that. Um, should you have any questions again uh, to the members while there is a discussion on the floor, please put your hand up in front of the video um, so that the chair and or myself can recognize you, at, at which time you will be asked to unmute yourself and to speak. Uh, Mr. Kokobe, um, I guess it'll just kind of have to be um, it, us asking you if you have any comments with regards. I can, to I can always just speak up. You can, and I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. If I've, got, uh, if I've got something to say or I, I need to have my position clear, I'll, I'll poke my nose in. Fair enough. Thank you. All right, guys, so that's all, it, that's all for me this evening. Um, thank you so very much. And uh, I'm gonna pass it over to the chair now. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Um, I wanna thank you for joining us in this afternoon's meeting. My name is Lori Brett. I think that is showing um, on the screen and I'm the current chair of the Heritage Committee. Um, I'm very pleased that so many people are interested in this matter and I uh, want to welcome all the members of the public who have joined us and those who have asked to speak and those who have submit and submitted written comments. Um, and I want you to know that your import, input is important to us and it is appreciated. Uh, before we begin, um, I'd like to, before we begin the formal part of the meeting, I would like to provide some background on the purpose of the meeting along with information on the mandate of the committee and the history of the schoolhouse property. And I apologize to those who have previous knowledge of this matter. Uh, it's not my intention to bore anyone, but I think it is especially important to begin the meeting with a contextual overview. So to begin with our mandate, the Heritage Committee is an advisory committee to council, and our mandate is to provide recommendations to council on matters related to the town's cultural heritage. We are tasked with the following, maintaining an inventory of heritage resources, listing and designating buildings deemed to have cultural heritage significance, and reviewing applications for alterations, additions, or demolition of heritage properties. Uh, with tremendous help from our staff uh, in the planning department, most notably uh, Rita Jabor, who is the town planner, and Sarah Aubin, our planning assistant, the committee has recommended 
the designation and listing of over 33 properties, 21 of which are in Harrow and the former Colchester South. We are also tasked with promoting and educating the community on our rich local history, which we do through the town's website, through brochures and literature, um, through our heritage plaque program, uh, and through a long list of activities that generally take place in February during Heritage Week. That's coming up and our theme this year is the Lost Settlements of Essex. We are currently creating heritage tours for walking, biking and driving, as well as a 360 degree app that will allow people to view the interior of heritage buildings in a safe matter, manner in light of the COVID restrictions. So why has this meeting been called? Uh, I called this meeting when word was received that Council had declared the property at 195 Bagot Street, commonly referred to as the Colchester Schoolhouse, as surplus. This information reached me on December 20th, the day before Council was expected to pass bylaw 1981, authorizing the private sale of the property. Members of the committee were alluded, alerted to the matter by email and in response to the published request for comments, I drafted an email addressed to the town clerk and council requesting that they defer passage of the authorization bylaw until the heritage committee could meet and discuss the matter. Uh, it appears that council heard from many concerned parties and they did subsequently vote to defer the matter. They also announced that the developer would be making a public presentation to council at their next meeting, uh, which is to be held this Monday. Uh, the developer has also offered to provide um, our committee with a similar presentation tonight. We're grateful for that and they'll be presenting uh, to us shortly. Now a bit of history and I provide this for everyone, members of the public, for staff um, and for committee members. Um, the Colchester Schoolhouse date back, dates back to 1881 and that was the same year that the government announced free compulsory education for all children. The current brick schoolhouse is located on the same lot as the original schoolhouse built 25 years earlier in 1856. The property was purchased by the town in 2008 as a result of heritage committee and widespread community interest in its preservation. At the time, it was thought that the building might serve as a community center or a public rental space once repairs were made. In 2016, the Heritage Committee recommended and Council concurred that the property was of cultural heritage significance and should be listed on the Municipal Heritage Property Register to prevent demolition. As a listed property, it could still undergo necessary alterations and so various upgrades have over the years been initiated by the town, including new windows, new roof and asbestos abatement. That's my understanding. There may be more details. Uh, on those changes. It was noted at the time in 2016 that the schoolhouse's design is an excellent example of a rural 19th century brick one room schoolhouse, that it was erected in 1881 as part of a historic moment in time that saw free compulsory education extended to all children, and that it is a local landmark for the village of Colchester one of the oldest communities in Ontario dating back to 1783 and the migration of loyalists at the end of the American Revolutionary War. In recent days, I've heard the schoolhouse called one of the historical pillars of Colchester, a gem, a defining feature of the community. And if you've had a chance to read Jeremy Parsons letter, which was attached to the amended agenda, you will see that he calls the area a unique historic precinct with a significant collection of public buildings and heritage resources. The area notably includes Christ Church built in 1876, the cemetery with its earliest burial dating back to 1808, the replica chapel built in 1819, and the church rectory built in 1893. Uh, the Heritage Committee has never lost sight of the historical significance of the schoolhouse. In 2018, the committee added an item to the agenda called Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse. Before the pandemic, we were discussing ways of identifying interested parties who would operate as an arm's length organization and would raise funds and identify suitable uses for the property. This continues to be a work in progress, hampered like so many pro projects by COVID. 
Uh, that is the background context. Uh, as you can um, tell, the meeting is specifically focused on discussing heritage conservation matters related to the proposed sale. I'm aware and the committee is aware that there are other issues that the community may be concerned about, but those issues will have to be taken to council as our mandate is very specific and is related to heritage conservation. So to begin the formal part of the meeting, we'll start the agenda um, by taking care of some housekeeping matters and uh, then we'll get right into the public presentations. And then finally, um, the, co the committee will consider various matters under new business and are likely to make some recommendations to council. So um, to the committee members, are there any declarations of conflict of interest? Hearing none, we'll move to item three on the agenda, which is adoption of the published agenda. Can I get someone to move that the published agenda for Thursday, January 14th, 2021 of the Heritage Committee, this special so meeting moved. be adopted? So moved, Madam Chair. Okay, I think we saw some hands there. Sarah, are you satisfied with that? Yes, I saw uh, Phil. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, adoption of the minutes that uh, the minutes formed part of our package that the minutes of the Thursday, November 26, 2020 uh, Heritage Committee regular meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I get a mover? Bill again. Bill and a seconder. And Steve. You are great. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. I assume we are all in favor of that. If anyone is against, please let me know. Uh, which takes us to the public presentations. And um, as per our procedural bylaw, we are allowing four presenters. Uh, we would ask that presenters focus their comments on heritage matters, as that is our only mandate. And um, that uh, if there are two presenters, my understanding is you have 10 minutes to speak. And if you are one presenter, you have five minutes to speak. And so I'd like to turn um, it over to Kim Lewis and James Flynn. Sarah, you may have to come in and give some instructions. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Kim Lewis and James Flynn, um, what I will do is I'll start stop sharing at this time, um, but Kim and James, again, um, if you'd like to unmute yourself and put your video on, um, I do have your presentation. However, if there are a few items that you'd like to speak to first, or if we, if you'd like to hop right into the presentation, please advise. Hi, and thank you so much. No, if we can jump right into the presentation, that'd be wonderful. Perfect. Okay. Just to confirm, Mr. Mr. Flynn and Mr. Lewis, um, uh, when we go through the presentation, when you want me to go to the next slide or the next page, just say next next slide, please. Okay, and I'll and I'll go through it. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'd like to start by thanking the Heritage Committee for allowing us to um, share a little bit of our presentation this evening. A larger presentation will follow on Monday, the 18th, at Council. Um, but we really appreciate the opportunity to um, demonstrate what our intentions on the property are. Again, my name is James Flynn and I represent the group that has a offer to purchase on the property. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, both the Flynn and Lewis families are longstanding residents of Kingsville and Essex County, uh, both business owners and um, owners of the Grove Hotel in Kingsville. Uh, the Grove Hotel is an 1854 building that was purchased in 2016. And um, we turned it into a memorable destination while maintaining the uh, history of the building. This led to us being awarded the TripAdvisor's top 25 hotels in Canada, actually ranking us number four in all of Canada. During the COVID pandemic, we launched a Hotels for Hero initiative and donated over 439 rooms to keep essential workers safe during this time. Um, we are 
committed to, pres to preserving and repurposing hi um, historic gems like the Colchester Schoolhouse. That's a little bit of background about us. Next slide, please. You can see our building uh, built in 1854 on the top left of the slide. We've maintained its appearance today. Um, the bottom right of the slide is the Grove Hotel as we're operating today. Next slide, please. If we're approved, we wanted to make it clear that we couldn't agree more that the Colchester Schoolhouse is a gem. We intend to utilize it, rejuvenate it, and not remove or, dis or demolish this property. Uh, we intend to maintain the exterior appearance, um, which we can show you in upcoming slides. And we intend to make the necessary repairs and improvements required to make sure it's structurally sound for generations to come. Next slide, please. This is the building as it appears today. There's been three additions to it, to the north, the south, and out the east, um, which aren't the original structure. The original structure, of course, is in the center of the building. And our intentions are to restore it to that gem it was over 140 years ago. And if we can go to the next slide, we've taken the liberty of removing those items digitally to show the committee um, how we intend to repurpose that building. Um, the additions that aren't um, historically significant have been uh, taken off the building. And this particular slide shows the um, chimney remaining that has chimney swifts. Our team is currently working with the Ministry of Natural Resources. Um, there are specific guidelines that need to be followed if that structure was to be taken down. So we have uh, two slides. This slide shows it remaining. If we can't remediate that, the next slide, if we can move to that next slide, please, shows it being taken down. Um, our intentions, if approved again, would be to maintain this historic gem for not only the residents, but for generations to come. So that's our presentation for tonight and just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to, to show you what we're thinking. Thank you very much. Committee Thanks. members, do you have any questions? Um, for these the proponents steve um thank you uh chair and uh, through you uh to mr flynn thank you very much for coming and uh, addressing our committee uh this evening um yeah there's a great uh concern that the building um be uh kept for generations that's uh it's been here a long time and we want to see it remain uh as members of this committee the, uh, the interior, do you have something to share with us on what you, as your repurposing goes, what would be the use of the building? How would, how would that be uh, going forward? Um, we, we, we don't have any renderings of the interior of the building, but again, on the 18th, we, we will be presenting a larger um, view of what our intended use is for the property. Um, we've actually developed We've designed a development to incorporate the schoolhouse. Our entire development um, surrounds this property and our intentions are to maintain it in its historical value, um, not changing the exterior of the building. Of course, inside, I'm sure many committee members have had the opportunity to visit the inside of it. And it's had, it, it's, it's gone through so many um, I guess, renovations and different uses over the years that um, it doesn't resemble that um, one room schoolhouse that it once was. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll let anybody else ask a question there. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Flynn. Oh, Steve's got his hand up again. <laughs> yes, Steve. Thank you. I didn't want to take up uh, a lot of people ask, but I got just a couple others. So the, uh, the, the building itself, 
we're going to secure the building uh, in what Lori was talking earlier, um, that the town has, has invested in making sure we put the roof on a couple years back, we put the windows in a couple years just to secure the building. We wanted to make sure that, you know, there was deterioration happening. So we needed to protect that investment. So those are the things that we did um, to help seal it up, keep animals out, keep the weather out, um, and just secure it. Uh, the I know there's a lot of things that you uh, can't necessarily go into, but the, the idea that, okay, we're going to um, secure the outside of the building and bring it back, build it up to what it was before. Um, can you share with us any information at all with regard to um, how we are going to protect the, the use around it? Because I would imagine that if we're going to move forward with um, designating uh, this building, uh, we would also want to designate probably the front apron of the building so that its use across the street from the from Christ Church um, is still, as you come into the corner, you enjoy the look of the, the, the church, the schoolhouse, the, the, uh, the cemetery that's there. It really is that corner of Southwestern Ontario. It's the, it's, it's the address where we started. Um, so just, just to, if you can share with us just some idea of what we're going to see, uh, you know, the, 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 the vision of making sure that that connection of those three areas uh, is maintained. Okay, Mr. Jim, Flynn or Mr. Lewis? Jim, did you catch that question? I know you were kicked off. No, actually, I, I'm sorry. I, I just got back on, Steve. Okay. I apologize. Um, so, Kim, if you could yeah. take this, I would appreciate it. So, um, as you'll see on, on Monday night at our uh, upcoming presentation, uh, the views from Baggett Street will be unobstructed. You will have a full view of the schoolhouse, and we were uh, very thoughtful in wanting to maintain that view. So. Uh, from Bagot Street, you will have a full view from the corner of Bagot and Sullivan Inn. You're going to have a full view of that schoolhouse stuff. Madam Steve, Chair? Steve, uh, yes, Richard. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, I, I appreciate the um, your stated intentions in terms of the building itself and trying to take it back to as close as possible to the original the original structure. Um, I, I'd sort of like to expand a little bit on Steve's, the direction that Steve was going and ask you uh, how much of the, how much of the property around the building, around the schoolhouse uh, is, is going to be considered part and parcel of that building. And the reason I ask that is because the we're talking a schoolhouse here and um inherent an inherent part of a school is the schoolyard and uh, i'll use as an example uh, another historic Richard. site in our in our municipality namely the john park homestead the the john park homestead when you refer to the John Park Homestead, you're not referring simply to the house. You're also referring to the the lawn surrounding the house. You're referring to the outbuildings that were originally utilized by the 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 Park family. Uh, it's it's a it's a a package deal, so to speak. Um, in the case of the schoolhouse, I understand that you might have you might have plans for part of the original schoolyard to be utilized in a in another another fashion but are you foreseeing uh preserving a certain area of the schoolyard immediately around the school building itself Hi, thank you for that question. And if I may, um, again, on the night of the 18th, our, our, our full site plan will be uh, put forth. Um, but yes, the, um, the east side, as uh, Kim was speaking to earlier, 
off of Baggett Street um, and the south side, like the southeast corner wrapping around the building is uh, untouched um, to maintain obviously the appearance of the schoolhouse and the yard around it. We, we, we do not intend to fill that site from you know, east to west with development, um, but to maintain, um, I guess that appearance, if you will, with a schoolyard around it. Thank you for that question. Hey. <clears throat> yes, Tony. A good, quick question. Uh, once the, once your, uh, your changes are made, will the property still be available for the public to visit? Or will there be any restrictions? You're not turning it into a personal residence or anything like that, are you? Will the public continue to be able to visit the site? Absolutely, and thank you, Tony, for that question. Um, yes, like our hotel in, in, in Kingsville, um, open to the public. And, you know, that, that, that's really at the heart and soul of, of what we do as developers is take historic gems, repurpose them so that the um, community and public can continue to, to enjoy them. Um, so yes, it, it's open to the public. Thank you. Okay. Thank you um, very much. Those were good questions and uh, the answers certainly helped us to understand um, the intention um, here. Are there any other questions before we um, let uh, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Flynn uh, go and move to the next presenter? Okay, seeing none. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, we do also. Um, next, we have Perry Basden. Perry, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? We can. Unfortunately, my video seems to have, uh, the host has dropped it, so uh, I don't necessarily need my video. It's not a problem if I just do audio. Okay, that sounds good. Please go okay. ahead. Uh, uh, as you know, I had sent a, uh, a letter to uh, the Heritage Committee. Uh, looks like I can start my video maybe, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, and from Mr. Flynn's comments, we, I think we're only getting part of the story of what the development is for the school property. Uh, in my original comments to the Heritage Committee, I mentioned in particular, uh, are you able to see the screen? Or is that out of, not available right now? We can see you. Okay, we'll go to full screen mode here then. Basically, this is an overview of the letter that I sent um, to the committee. Um, I'm sorry, got the wrong file, my mistake. Get the right one here. No, nope, wrong one again. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Uh, what my intent is, is to, uh, as explained to the uh, Heritage Committee, was to try and preserve this property as it was intended to originally when the town had purchased it. Uh, there's methods that we can be used outlined graphically many times verbally in the minutes of the Heritage Committee meetings where people have come forward and for whatever reason, the thing never came to fruition. A lot of the times the interested parties perhaps didn't come back. There's a lot of issues uh, that I have found by looking through the minutes for the last few years where uh, it appears that uh, recommendations even made by the Heritage Committee have fallen on deaf and ears when uh, presented to council. Uh, the Canary's Committee, for instance, recently, as 2019, has suggested having a survey available for the um, uh, heritage, I'm sorry, the, uh, the fun days, fun fair days at uh, the marina and the park with a flyer specifically for asking for residents input regarding the uh, schoolhouse. And unfortunately that was not done. It was supposed to have been tacked on with part of a display that the um, town planning department was having. That was dropped and they did have a flyer out 
it was more on a, a six question questionnaire. There's the only mention of heritage at all. There was absolutely no mention of schools. There was one word in there as a checkbox on one of the questions if anybody was interested in a heritage as one of their options. So from seeing that, I realized that there's some a disconnect in these, and I've explained that in the in my letters and documents that I supplied to the Heritage Committee, which form part of this meeting. So it's my intent, uh, first of all, to try and save it, to keep it in the public domain. I am willing to act as a catalyst to push that process forward. I don't think the, the town of Essex has uh, shown a lot of enthusiasm for getting that done ever since they decided that they were not going to fix it up as a cultural center. I do believe it's still viable. I think it's possible on a much reduced scale. I noticed that Councillor Bjorkman in uh, April of 2020, I believe there was a motion at the town council meeting regarding a donation of $100,000 to uh, uh, IRCA for use as a, as a uh, um, uh, tourist information kiosk or setup of some sort, I'm not aware of the details, for JR Park Homestead. Actually, I believe that that would have been an ideal opportunity to have it in the schoolhouse. Had it been fixed up over the years, it would have been a great location for it. It's a little bit out of the way, it's in a more built up area, but it would have been acceptable use for the old schoolhouse. So to that end, I believe there's enough interest. I think the town of Essex, when they um, went ahead and served notice of surplus for this property, it kind of hit a nerve with a lot of people in, in Colchester. And I think there is sufficient evidence now gathered by talking to people in the community, phone calls I've received, emails I've received, that there now is the time to generate the interest, get it going, have it registered, and any other steps that are necessary. There's methods. Regent Jabor has done an excellent job of explaining it to meetings over the past years. I think we're ready to move forward with it, and I'll take the lead on it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Perry. Um, so what I've uh, heard from your presentation is that you would be interested in being a, a lead member of a potential Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse group. Is that what we're hearing? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any questions for uh, Mr. Basden? Yes, I have one. Yes, Tony. Uh, Mr. Bazin, what would be your concern if a private developer took over the site and maintained its, uh, its, uh, the original heritage in some way? My present concern is the developer hasn't really specified what are the use for the property other than you'll have a visual sight line along Baggett Street and Sullivan Street. Uh, I have heard many rumors and they are rumors and I'll accept them for that. But uh, I believe it, some of the rumors indicate it's going to be used for uh, short-term rentals, Airbnbs, if you will. And I don't think that's an appropriate, um, if it is a true statement, I don't think that's appropriate for that heritage property. Why would you put something that is modern to the last 10 years when Airbnbs just started up in a heritage site that is consistent with something that was built in 1881? I think that would detract from the whole area there. Uh, in addition to the uh, one street uh, number 195 where the schoolhouse is, the town also owns the vacant lot at 255 here, uh, Bagot Street, directly north of it. And there's also an easement from Bagot Street down to the lake that could be developed again as a small park. And again, with the, the schoolhouse, the park, the vacant land, which was currently used on, on a lot of times for overfull parking, if you will, um, I think that would be a great opportunity to get a small parkette, an anchor, a little center, heritage-based, uh, available for picnics, family gatherings, whatever it is, as it probably did back in the 1800s. The, on the opposite side of town, you've got Bell Park, and then you've got the busy downtown core area with a major lineal park, the marina. Very busy time down there, usually. Some people enjoy having a nice, quiet area away from the hubbub and bub of all that's going on down at the marina and the beach. This has been seen to be used for that quite often. As a matter of fact, I was down there last Sunday, met a couple of Windsor who were down at the waterfront in that little extension, the easement, 
and enjoying a little lunch together. Now, this is in the middle of winter. Imagine what draw you could get if it was developed as a green space for the whole area. Just a follow-up question, if I may, Lori. Yes, certainly, Tony. Yeah, yeah so the, the, the town has had this property now for how long? Since 2008. And so what, why do you think now would be any different than the last 12 years where there's been no activity at all going on on this location? Like why, why do you think today you can, that uh, the town and other people would get involved to make a change now? Like it's sat vacant for 12 years. It's become more and more dilapidated. Uh, there are pieces on that original property uh, that really don't really belong there. The, the front end and the back end. I, I'm just curious as to what, what's the difference today over the last 12 years with respect to this property? Thank you very much for that question. I believe that there is an interest now. Uh, from people I've talked to, most of them are in the depression. They see that people from the town of Essex going in there on occasion. They see work being done, restoring it, putting a new roof, new windows, things like that. And they say, a lot of them say, well, we were waiting for the town to come forward with a proposal and nothing was ever done. Now, they were waiting. People are waiting, have been waiting for, well, I, I think that was originally uh, council lost focus when the uh, building at the marina uh, became available and they were trying to turn that into community center. Whether that's a true statement or not, I have no idea. But the point is people have been seeing some action around there and now they say, well, it's gonna be sold. We can't have this. We were been waiting for the town to come forward with some sort of proposal and it hasn't happened. So let's act. I've done it. I don't see what we can do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Steve. Thank you, Madam Chair. And through you, uh, Mr. Gosden, thank you very much for uh, coming forward, uh, for sending your letter and putting uh, some, some real research out there for us and things for us to uh, look at and to, uh, you know, look back on ourselves and see what's, uh, what's happened. Um, this is what this meeting is for. This meeting is to bring people with different ideas uh, together uh, to look at the schoolhouse, uh, to look at the value of the schoolhouse in, in many different ways. Uh, there is a proposal going to council on Monday, but that's not what we're here really to, that's one of the things we're here to decide. The other thing we're here to decide is how far do we want to go with, uh, with listing or um, registering this property. Um, I've had phone calls and emails from well over 70 people um, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, to uh, Tony's question, uh, why is today different? Well, today is different because people have acted. People have found out that this could change. This could be different. Something different than we thought was going to happen could happen. Um, and it, it gets people into action. Uh, so I think you're right to bring this forward. I think we're right to talk about it and decide, uh, is there a group uh, willing to come together uh, to, to put uh, that friends group together? There, I can tell you from my opinion, I'm one counselor, but on council, um, there's not a priority for funding uh, for this, this project right now. We've got uh, a lot of other big issues going on. Uh, you're right, we put in a, uh, a, a community room at the uh, marina. We took back that upstairs. It used to be a restaurant a couple times. That is now a community room that is available uh, for rent for anyone in our community. Uh, we are uh, supporting uh, John R. Park Homestead. We will have a tourism kiosk there that they will man, that we don't have to have to staff. We, they'll be pushing uh, the, the community of Essex uh, for us. So those, some of those things that the schoolhouse was when they bought it and originally said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Maybe those don't fit a hundred percent anymore, but it doesn't mean that there isn't things that can be done, that there isn't value to the community and there aren't people that will come forward and use that building. So I appreciate you um, coming out and talking to us and, and bringing up the things that have been said before in these meetings. And, uh, and that there is a, a, move, a movement of people 
that are interested in in keeping this building uh, as a town um, place, including the property that's there. So just uh, to all of your points, thank you very much for bringing those forward. And uh, like I said, there are a lot of people out there that share your views. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Berkman. Very good, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Basden. <clears throat> If there are uh, no other questions, we'll move to um, items, uh, sorry, the next presenter, which is Carol and Lynn Quick. Do we have Carol and Lynn Quick? You'll have to unmute. You need to unmute. There, how's that? that okay? That was good. There good. we go. Now we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I guess I'm going to start and then I'll take off after me if that's okay. First of all, I want to say good afternoon. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak. And actually, I am going to talk a little bit about history here in the school and in the community, as well as other schools. And Lori, you and I probably will have be saying a couple of the same things, but hopefully it's not too boring to everybody here. Um, many of you here today may be familiar with, with it, with this history, others maybe not. I do believe though a refresher course is important at this time. In the early 1800s, there was very, very little incentive to take children away from the helping on their family farm and sending them to school. There were very few teachers or books, little money, and little to no government support. School was often held in barns or churches. Eventually, though, many small schools were built throughout the Colchester Township. In Colchester Village, school was held in the original stone Christ Church at the south end of the current cemetery on Sullivan Street. A log schoolhouse was eventually built south of the church. As early as 1817, Colchester had two certified school teachers. Unfortunately, due to land erosion on Lake Erie, this school was lost. A second school was then built in 1856 on the corner of Bagot and County Road 50. But as you said, in 1881, 25 years later, free compulsory education became mandated by law. And so that current school was removed off of the property and our red brick schoolhouse was built on the same lot but further south with one classroom and one teacher for all grades. It was used right up to the early 1960s. The Colchester School was then sold and privately owned until 2008 when the town of Essex purchased it. What is so remarkable to me is when I imagine what hardships our ancestors were faced with when they were settling here then in order to have their children educated, they had to build not one, but three different schools after using Christ Church as their classroom. It is not like they had power tools or construction companies like we have today to do this. Now, at this time, all of our schools in Colchester South are privately owned, I believe. The only one left is Colchester Schoolhouse the exception? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Are we good? Sorry, it appears that I dropped, but I am back. I'm not okay. sure. Uh, I wasn't hearing everything that you were saying, but please pick up where you where you left I'll off. Just repeat the last sentence. Our Colchester Schoolhouse is the exception. It is the last one left. It has been given back to the public. We have been patiently waiting to see how this historic school will best serve our great community here. It should not be sold back into private ownership 
for financial gain. This school and the community have quite a story to tell. And I ask you for your full support in letting council know what a huge mistake it would be to sell it. Thank you for your time and support. Uh, thank you very much. Do you, will you have any questions uh, for the quicks? Any comments? Phil. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Quick, are, would you be interested in um, joining uh, Mr. Parson in the Friends of uh, Colchester Schoolhouse? Absolutely. We've already told him that. And okay. I think my husband has a bit. My husband also has a little bit to read here too when time allots. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Polkak? Yes, please. Uh, that well, I don't think that was Mr. Parsons. That was Perry Bazin you're referring to. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, a slight error. No problem. Okay. Just had made a correction. Do you want Lynn to read his now, or is there a question? Hello? Yeah, I think it's best to have, yeah, have, have Lynn read, and then we can ask any other questions. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I too would, <clears throat> would like uh, the committee to send a strong and clear message to the town council that I'm opposed to the notice of declaration of surplus lands for 195 Baggett Street with the intention of private sale of this property. I don't have a lot to say, but I would like to give you a brief history of my family and the value of this property. My ancestors first settled here in the late 1700s and lot eight, just on lot eight, just north of the present school. They came from Virginia and Kentucky and were of Dutch origin. Their families attended school and church here in the, in the village. The Quick family thrived here and contributed much to the community. There are many families in the area still living here with similar backgrounds. And my history is only a small part of the greater story of the area. For the last 24 years, my wife and I have lived across the road from the school. There can be no better place to retire. This whole area around the school and church should be saved and promoted for all to enjoy. This was the heart of Colchester. I too would hate to see it lost for someone's financial gain. The tranquility of this area will be lost forever. Commercial additions to this property would spoil the historical value and affect our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Quick. Um, I just want to mention that my connection has dropped me several times. So Richard, if you're on the line, you may have to step in. Um, thank you to the Quicks. Are there any questions for the Okay, hearing uh, none. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Quick. Uh, oh, we appreciate, uh, Steve, yes? Sorry, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead first. Um, and I was going to just suggest, Lori, a lot of times when we have these multiple people on Zooms, if you turn off your camera, you at least yeah. keep the, uh, the audio. Yeah. Uh, oh, the audio. Okay. Couple, right? okay, good to, good to know. Meetings. Uh, the next um, time, it, if it shows up again, I'll, I'll but, uh, uh, do that. Yeah. So anyways, to Mr. and Mrs. Quick, thank you very much. Uh, for uh, coming and uh, and presenting to us, um, that's uh, really something, Lynn, with your your family going back as far as it does in this area. Um, uh, we appreciate the the community coming together and sharing those stories uh, and knowing the history of it. Now, what is important for us in this committee is to remember that we are 
debating and talking about the schoolhouse itself and uh, recommendations with regard to the schoolhouse and uh, the heritage value of that, um, which is hard to distinguish many times between the overall experience that we get from that corner. So, but all of this adds to, to exactly what that schoolhouse means to the people here. So thank you very much for adding that. You're welcome. Our presenter, it's Anne Benito, who is representing a group of a larger group of, of residents who are concerned. You. Good are you there, Anne? Oh, there Good she evening. is. Can you see me? All right. We can. Now, I have requested a PowerPoint presentation to uh, be shared. My my screen could be shared. I'm not sure if Sarah received it or not. Hi, Sarah. Oh, oh go ahead, sorry. Sarah. Through you, through you, the chair. Um, I did receive an email from you, Anne. However, um, the link that you provided to your presentation, I'm unable to open, and I did respond advising of such, um, and I'm unable to allow for sharing um, of the screen with anybody else. So. Um, is it, I, I'm not sure what, what we can do at this point, really. Um, All right, then I'll read what I have. And unfortunately, the pictures, I think, really lend themselves to um, the presentation of what this means to the group. Can and I ask, Ms. Benito, that if, if you could, or if we could together, work this out, um, whether it be uh, tomorrow morning, um, and then that way I can still send it out to the members and still provide it as uh, information on the minutes, if that's okay with you? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening to the Heritage Committee, and I do um, appreciate and I'm grateful for the opportunity to represent our group. There's many in, um, really concerned citizens that have come together and um, I'm here to represent them, which is quite an honor considering they're amazing. I live at 53 Sullivan Street, which is directly behind the old schoolhouse at 195 Baggett Street. I have a master's of education degree and I've taught for 29 years. During that time, I was twice nominated for the Governor General's Award for Teaching Canadian History. While I didn't win, I became a finalist and I learned much from my teaching years. Placing individuals in certain locations brings natural, curious inquiry and engages the mind in stimulating ways. I've had many guests and visitors to our area as I run a B&B &B, and they ask many questions concerning the schoolhouse, the church and the cemetery located at Bagot and Sullivan Streets, our collective heritage. Certain locations just stimulate the mind to trigger memories too, making for meaningful connections, which is so important. The schoolhouse triggers curiosity, memories, and connects us to our community's past. Many people are looking into their ancestry as a way to learn more of their personal heritage. My roots are not as deep as the Quicks or the McKees or the McCormicks who came to this area in the 1800s. Um, mine dates for over a hundred years though. My family purchased this property from my mom and dad in 2002, who purchased it from my grandparents in 1950, who acquired it from my grandfather's brother in 1918. This Arthur Greenhow, a land speculator, purchased when it became available in 1914 and cottagers started coming from Windsor, Detroit with the in increasing availability of cars. You can see that my genealogy does go back a ways. We feel a rootedness here, which I suspect many in our, of our group feel, only they feel it to a greater extent. We appreciate the historic district where we live, the village of Colchester, as does the town. Collectively, this community takes great pride in our deep historic roots. They refer to our connecting road as Historic Road 50, 
and they honor our heritage as was celebrated in the 225 years. We made booklets and we had banners, all kinds of things that were in the supporting pictures. The village has seen significant changes with buildings being demolished on County Road 50 and Jackson Street. These buildings can only be appreciated through pictures and books that share story of days long ago that shaped this area and much of Upper Canada. My mom, who will turn 99 this year, and her sister is 102, they were um, cottagers here. And mom can still tell stories of Miss Hackett at the Hackett's General Store, especially the Telegraph, the forbidden dance halls, and Mr. Dart who pumped their gas. Days of her youth enjoying Colchester. What has remained is Christchurch, the historic cemetery with the replica church, and the schoolhouse. My mom more easily tells stories of memories in these areas as walking the space triggers actual experiences. The church was established here in the early 1800s with a circuit riding preacher even before that. The schoolhouse was erected in 1881, such an accomplishment for this group of settlers that had previously schooled their children in the church. In 1957, the replica church was erected in the cemetery honoring the previous generations that worshiped and did life here. Madam Chair, a, a one minute warning for the presentation. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm nearly done. Okay. This corner is connected to so much of the community's past. The story for our next generation needs to be told and experienced through meaningful interactions, which this district provides. Preservation of the old schoolhouse is important to the integrity of the local history. This very space at Bagot and Sullivan has been used for centuries as the shared community space. It's mentioned as the village core on many of the, the maps in early. The community to some bloom judges have mentioned in, in the notes to the town that this corridor should be developed, appropriate signage offered, and it gives educational opportunities for visitors. It's long been a quiet respect, a respite from the ever changing present day hustle and bustle, and we need to keep it that way. Our immediate concern is that the schoolhouse property will go into private for profit, profit developers that will change the quaint village feel. We ask that the Heritage Committee to send a strong and clear message to the Town Council that we are opposed to the notice of declaration of surplus lands and the sub subsequent intended private sale of the property. This sale will open opportunity to forever change the historic nature of our neighborhood and will have a significant impact upon the residents and all who casually use this space. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Anne. Uh, do any members of the committee have questions for Anne? Yes, Steve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Anne. Anne, thank you very much for coming forward and sharing uh, your story and your family story and um, the, the importance of the building uh, to the community. Um, I'll ask a question that uh, Mr. Polcock asked earlier. The, the group that you represent, uh, are there members there that are, are committed to uh, working towards uh, fundraising and uh, doing the you know, actual work that it would take for us to uh, make that uh, schoolhouse uh, a building that we could actually um, do things and we know what it needs, right? There's, uh, there's, there's funds that community groups can access that the town can't. And again, if there was going to be a group that comes in to uh, become administrators of that, they would need to take care of that. So I'm just asking, uh, is your group prepared to uh, become part of that, uh, that effort? Uh, yes, thank you for your question. And undoubtedly, there has been a resounding yes in the members of the group that I represent, myself included. Okay. Well. Thank you very much. Um, again, all of these, uh, all this input uh, needs to uh, be focused on the on the heritage value of that building uh, to the community of Colchester and the greater community of Essex. Um, so we appreciate all that input. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Anne. 
Uh, if there are there any other questions for Anne? If not, uh, we're going to move uh, to accept the presentations by the delegations in agenda agenda item five. Okay. I thank you very much, Anne. I think uh, I think the questions have been asked. So, Steve. Well, I move to receive. The, Sorry, you're muted. Yeah, I'll remove move to, to receive. receive. The, Thank you. A seconder. Second. Okay. Second. I heard Richard, and I also saw uh, Phil. So <laughs> it is well seconded. Okay. Very good. So um, very good. So those presentations are accepted. The uh, next item on the agenda is correspondence. Uh, we don't typically have correspondence, but uh, we have attached five pieces of correspondence we received from uh, various individuals, Perry Basden, Carolyn Lynn Quick, Ann Benito, Jeremy Parsons, and Monica Carruthers. Um, can I get a motion um, to accept to receive the correspondence listed in that agenda item. I see Tony's hand and can I get a seconder? Steve, thank you very much. Steve, okay, all in favor, I'm assuming. Very good, thank you very much. Okay, and this brings us down to um, item nine, which is new business and the heritage matters related to um, the sale of this uh, surplus property. Um, does anyone want to begin the conversation? I think there are a number of issues of concern to me. Uh, I am, and, and I'll list them to just to, as points to get us started. The first issue that I'm concerned about is um, the fact that the Heritage Committee wasn't consulted by council uh, before a decision was made to declare the property surplus. And um, in my own research, in reviewing the sale of surplus land by law, uh, I have noted that it does not differentiate between regular parcels of land or buildings uh, and heritage properties. And um, furthermore, it has a notice provision, I believe it's section 10 of that bylaw, that allows um, the clerk to use one of three methods to communi communicate with the public. One is by announcing it at open council, which he did, um, but the other two are related to communicating through a subscription newspaper. And although we do have a subscription newspaper in our community, the other newspaper is not a subscription newspaper, so the language is a little dated. And um, of course, most information these days is shared with members of the community through social media. And um, I'm concerned at the wording um, as uh, someone who has done quite a bit of legal drafting. I can tell you that the and or construction at the end of each of the options. So they can announce it in open council and or publish it in a subscription newspaper and or, um, I forget what the third one is, announce it in this other way. It basically um, doesn't allow for proper community input. And so um, my concern is that council is perhaps not aware that we don't have sufficient protections in place for heritage properties like this one, but like others, we have um, the train station in Essex, we have the Carnegie building in Essex, and we even have cultural, culturally significant structures like the, um, uh, like the Cenotaph at Town Hall that um, really, in my opinion, need to be protected differently than just a regular piece of vacant property. And that can be done through a revision of the sale of surplus land bylaw. And perhaps there are other pieces of legislation and I, I wouldn't know what those are, but um, I think that we need to bring to council's attention that some sort of safeguards should be built into that particular bylaw 
to prevent this sort of situation from happening in the future. That's my first concern. Um, I, I'm going to just open it to members to discuss any concerns that they have. Or I can make a, I can make a resolution if it would be more suitable and we can uh, have a vote and a discussion on that resolution. Steve, is that a more appropriate way to approach it? Yeah, I would suggest that any, yeah, as, as we go through this, if anyone has a concern or something they want to bring up that we, we identify that one and deal with that issue first and then move on to the next one. So I would okay. suggest go ahead and make that uh, motion. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, <laughs> I just started to ramble. I really <laughs> meant to open it to the rest of you and I would come later, but I'll just make the motion and I'm sorry, it's a bit of a lengthy one, but um, I've written it out and I think this is the appropriate motion that council promptly revised bylaw 855 related to the sale of surplus lands to provide special recognition, protections, and safeguards for publicly owned property of cultural heritage significance, and that the said revised bylaw ensure robust stakeholder involvement by including enhanced public notice requirements with extended periods of public consultation, that all public notices announcing the potential or actual sale of public lands containing cultural heritage assets identify the affected property by legal description, as well as familiar and commonly used names, I'll speak to that in a moment, with specific mention of their heritage designation status, and that Schedule A to Bylaw 855 uh, be updated. Uh, it is a register of heritage proper, it's a register of town properties, that it be updated to include a separate list of cultural assets of historical significance. And I, I've added some of these things, including um, a, uh, um, a, a, a request that they include familiar and commonly used names because when the notices went in the newspapers, they were identified as 195 Bagot Street, but I wouldn't have known that that was the Colchester Schoolhouse. There was a map and I was pretty sure it was the Colchester Schoolhouse, but I do believe that describing something by its familiar name is especially important when we want the community to be aware. It's just a minor point, but I think an important point. Okay, that's my, um, my motion. Can I get a seconder? Second, Madam Chairman. Oh, thank you. I heard Richard and I saw Aunt, uh, Tony's hand. Uh, any discussion on this particular issue? Laurie, I just want to say I'm in support of, uh, of how you've laid it out. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Steve? Yeah, that, uh, that motion's a mouthful. That, uh, that's probably <laughs> one of the most involved motions I've, I've met in the last six years. But it's very, very well laid out. Uh, my only question would be, and it would be something probably for um, our uh, uh, director and planning is, is to define a cultural heritage asset. So that's not necessarily something that's listed or something that's been registered. Um, so we would just need to, we need to quantify that or qualify that because um, that, that becomes uh, something that well, you consider that a heritage asset, but I don't necessarily. So right. we, we, would, we would need some definition to that, but I, I do agree with, I, I agree with the, the feel of it, the, what it is you're trying to get. Uh, and that's, again, we're making this recommendation to council. It would be up to council to make sure that we put definitions in all of those um, lines. But I, I do like the, the entire feel of that, yes. Thank you. Absolutely. And that's a very good point. It, the bylaw would need to have definitions included. And um, we haven't yet called on Rita, but um, I believe that one of uh, Rita's um, uh, goals is to, ha to do some sort of a cultural mapping. Uh, sorry. I, I'm sorry, Rita. I, I, I can't quite come up with the right word, but a project where we would identify what the heritage assets are. So a bylaw 
could dovetail with some of the work that Rita is proposing to do. Uh, Rita, would you like to speak on that? Through the chair, certainly. So we currently have a heritage register, which includes listed properties such as the Colchester Schoolhouse and the neighboring Christchurch, as well as designated properties within the town of Essex. So those are properties that we've identified as having cultural heritage value as is defined in the Ontario Heritage Act and in the prescribed Ontario regulation. Um, but as Lori noted, we are uh, looking to undertake a cultural master plan in the future to identify additional resources, um, as well as those resources that perhaps we've lost, such as important landscapes um, where settlements once were that we hope to promote through our heritage plaque program. So um, in terms of a definition, I, we can certainly assist with providing uh, one to the clerk's division if council decides to direct amendments to their uh, surplus lands bylaw. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rita. That's what I was looking for, cultural master plan. I just, I couldn't come up with it. If I can um, add something, Madam Chair, this is Lori Chadwick. Yes, Lori. Uh, thank you. Uh, through you to the committee. Uh, now, this notice of motion, uh, I just looked at the agenda. I don't see that there is a copy. Uh, Madam Chair, would you be able to send administration, specifically our uh, recording secretary, a copy of that uh, notice of motion? Should it be uh, absolutely okay yes and, yeah, absolutely. and secondly just to follow up with uh, Ms. Jabour's statement the intent uh, down the road and it could take uh, several years is to prepare a cultural master plan for the municipality um, and so what I would urge is that um, to if if it is the flavor of council and decision of council to update the bylaw that it not be tied to the completion of the cultural master plan, because uh, that may be, you know, one to two years from now. Yes, that, that's a very good point. Um, and uh, I was just thinking in my mind that I knew that Rita had this on the horizon and that it will be one of those opportunities for the town to collect that information. But um, I take your point and that is a good one. Um, I do have the any any resolutions that I'm planning to make tonight. I have already typed them out and I'm reading them to the committee uh, verbatim. So I can certainly forward them uh, to Sarah. So we've had uh, um, we've moved the motion. We've seconded um, the motion, I believe. Um, are there any more comments or shall we go to a vote? Madam Chair. Yes, Richard. I just want to take the opportunity to make a few comments related to the motion. Um, first of all, I thought you did a phenomenal job of, uh, of putting the motion together because it's it's not a it's not an easy uh, it's not easy to express what our objectives should be in this particular case. But um, I just I just wanted to state that that my concerns related to this property are that its heritage uh, needs to be recognized and it needs to be preserved. Uh, the question is how to achieve that goal without, uh, or achieve that goal the most economically to the community while meeting the community's needs. Uh, I think it's premature to look to the private sector, at least at this point, to undertake that preservation. Um, the community, because the community hasn't yet had an opportunity to both express how it thinks the property should be utilized uh, or to know how that utility is going to be paid for. The community needs time and the opportunity to make its case. If I can, I'm sorry, Richard, to interrupt you, but Sure. That's a conversation we still need to have. That doesn't really have anything to do with Lori's motion of, well, it, of changing the well, of changing the bylaw. It does. It does, Steve, because the the purpose of the the recommendation is to change the means by which we let the community know what is going on before things happen. 
If that's where you're headed with that, that's fine. I thought we were looking at. Well, further. that's that's where I'm headed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, um, anyways, that's. Uh, I think with with those comments, uh, I pretty much pretty much made my point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Okay. So, all in favor of the motion? I uh, can't see Tony at the moment. There he is. Okay. Yes. Very good. Phil, very good. Richard said yes. Thank you. All in favor? We're all in favor. Motion passes. I will now not speak and I will ask the members if they would like to make uh, <laughs> any comments or any um, motions related to this matter. Phil. Uh, through the chair, re to uh, Rita, Ms. Jabor, um, what is the zoning for the schoolhouse? Like the, the, like is it residential or is it commercial or? Through the chair to Councillor uh, Pocock. The I'm not a councillor. <laughs> or sorry, not councillor, I'm sorry, it's been a long day, member Pocock. <laughs> <laughs> the zoning of the property is G12, which uh, denotes a green district for public or private park purposes, campgrounds, exhi exhibition halls. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I think... If uh, is it okay if I talk? Because I think you're on mute and I didn't hear a word you said. And I, I, I'm still not very good at reading lips. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I had unmuted it. Please go ahead. No, I was just going to say that, uh, um, you know, we don't have all that many heritage properties. This one is, it's kind of a natural, you know, that, uh, and the only thing I, I would say is, uh, to council would be that uh, I understand the financial pressures that we're under as a town, uh, but uh, you know, here's an opportunity where I, I think we, I'm not quite sure how to say this, but if we get this community support and they get involved with this project, uh, I think that's a great idea to try to keep this thing alive and keep it within the community. But I would give them, I would give them a bit of a deadline. I would say, let's give them five years or uh, to, like we need to put some heat on, the, on this group to make something happen. <laughs> Otherwise, 10 years from now, we'll be talking about the same thing. So I, I, I believe that, uh, uh, that uh, this heritage, if possible, that this uh, heritage site should be maintained, updated through the friends of uh, Colchester Schoolhouse, etc. But but I think that there should be some there should be a deadline on this to uh, to kind of move this thing forward because I don't know if nothing's done to this property in five years. I'm sure it may not last five years. I mean, looking at those uh, you know the state of the the, the properties, but so. Uh, to recap, uh, uh, I, I really like the idea of advising council that this should be preserved and to uh, that this should be preserved, but I think we, and we should give this, this, this group an opportunity to uh, uh, do something with it, but give them some, put some timelines on this. Um, thank you, Tony. Would the commit um, would the would you be in favor of making some sort of motion to um, to notify council uh, of our ongoing efforts to I to identify an arm's length organization provisionally identified as the Colch Friends of School Colchester Schoolhouse, um, and that such an organization be encouraged within five years to complete fundraising and a fundraising project 
and some form of plan to um, preserve and utilize the building. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I'm wondering if this is something that we should remind uh, council of that this it was a work in progress. And um, now that we are aware that there are people interested, should there be a motion to that effect that we remind council or we advise council that individuals have expressed an interest in forming a Friends of the Colchester Schoolhouse group and that we would recommend council provide them with a five year window in which to fundraise and effect um, renovations to the building. Madam Chair. Yes, Richard. Um, I don't disagree with putting a time frame on uh, on what's being proposed, and I, I agree wholeheartedly with with Tony's Tony's uh, statement. Where I have a bit of a problem, and where I feel that that putting a time frame on it is premature, is that number one, we don't know what the community wants to do with the building yet. The community has to has to first of all get their collective heads together and identify what they propose to do with the with the building. Secondly, once that's been identified, they have to go in and have the have the building assessed to identify exactly what has to be done and how much it's going to cost in order to execute that that objective. We may find after going through that process that we may be able to do what needs to be done to that building in a matter of three years. On the other hand, we may find that, uh, especially if there's structural issues to be addressed, that it may take longer than five years to come up with the necessary funds to, to do something with it. I would, I would far rather see us put a motion forward, um, first of all, uh, encouraging the establishment of the, the Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse, because keep in mind, this has to be an arm's length group. It can't be a, a committee uh, of the town, and it, it can't be a committee that is being essentially subsidized by the town, okay? So uh, I think our first, our first recommendation to council has to be that um, a, a, an arm's length group, the Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse be established. They go through the necessary assessments as far as what the community wants to do with the, the property and you know, what has to be done in order to execute that. And then we can start talking about a time frame. So uh, perhaps giving the, giving the community six months to get the group together, to do, to do the, the, barn, the, the brainstorming as far as what the community sees the property, what role the community sees the property playing, and you know, what has to be done to achieve that. I think six months, eight months is, is plenty of time to be able to get, to get that work done. Once that's done, and they come back to come back to us and come back to council with what they would like to see done. Then we can do a, a realistic assessment of how difficult it's going to be to come up with the money necessary to execute that that plan. How's that for long-winded? Uh, that's good, uh, Steve. Thank you. Um, through you, uh, I, this, this is a good conversation. This is how we need to go through this. And I, I think I'd like to even bring it a little tighter. I think there's recommendation that this committee needs to bring to council. And so there's three of them uh, that I think. There's the recommend to council that we've, uh, we've looked at uh, what the proponent has, has brought to us and we can recommend the sale we can recommend not to sell. We can recommend to defer 
until others have had an opportunity, including a friends of group. Uh, I think for us to put any kind of time limit on there as a committee, uh, we leave that to council uh, to decide how long is too long. I know that uh, there's been uh, investigation by administration uh, into the building. Now, I don't know if we have anybody on this meeting that could advise us. Uh, has there been an estimate of what it would take to bring the building back to the place that it's habitable? Because right now we can't, we don't hold any functions there. We don't hold anything inside the building because it is not inhabitable by way of um, electrical, plumbing, all of that stuff. So uh, I was just wondering, is there somebody on our meeting here tonight that has any knowledge of those costs? I see Doug Sweet. Hi, Doug. Would you like to uh, comment? To you, Madam Chair. Um, the last price was approximately four years ago, and it was just for over $300,000. So with inflation and new costs, we'll be above that for sure. But just want to stress that's about four years ago we had a price. And that was that was to do what with the building, Doug? A like uh, point, a lot of the utilities, as Steve mentioned. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Um, but was, but was there was there any sort of was there any sort of objective in terms of the use of the building that 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 estimate was was based on? Just or was it, simply, was it simply to, you know, throw up, throw up new drywall with insulation and then we'll decide what we do with it after that? Um, I wasn't here at the time, but I believe the intent was to get it ready, if it was to be ready for public use. There was no direct what that use would be, but uh, accessibility for the washrooms to get the pump to code, the electrical up to code, et cetera. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Steve, yeah. oh, if, yes. if, I could just, if I could just make one observation. Certainly. When I, when I suggested that we make that sort of a motion, I'm recognizing the fact that, you know, we're simply, we're simply advising council on what we think they should do. Yep. Okay. If we make that motion saying that, that we should form this group and that they should be given six or eight months to, to get get things together, it's entirely up to council whether or not they feel that number one, they want to, they want to have a group put together to, to come up with, with proposals and two, how long they want to give them to do it. We're Correct. simply, we're simply making a motion as to what, what we think should be the next step. And, and the other thing, yeah, I, the other thing I think we need to keep in mind too, and I'm trying, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be fair to, to the developers as well, is that if, if we can't come up with uh, a proposal for what should be done to the property for, or done with the property and uh, some idea as to what the, what the costs involved are and what the, what the possibilities of raising that kind of money are, we should we should be making the we we should be allowing the private sector to at the very least uh, play a role in the preservation of that building. Okay, and to to put it off more than more than eight months, I think is being unreasonable to them. Madam Chair, I do have a question. Uh, when time permits, this is Lori Shadwick. Okay, one moment, Lori. Uh, Richard, um, okay, so we've had a few different thoughts on this issue. Does anybody want to make a specific motion? Think about that while I give the floor to Lori for a minute. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you to the committee. Uh, just to bring forward this information as a, uh, as a reminder and as information that uh, you may have, uh, but also information that can be shared with the public uh, so everyone is on the same page. Council is not mandated at this time to engage the committee 
prior to declaring a property as surplus, as you, uh, Ms. Brett, has, ind has indicated uh, prior to uh, making the motion uh, just uh, the, during this meeting. Um, the Heritage Committee may wish to comment on the sale, no different than any member of the public. However, the committee must be engaged when and if a proposal entails demolition to the heritage feature. So as a friendly reminder, any motion that is put forward to council, council may choose to, again, if it's a comment uh, on the sale, no different than any member of the public could consider. However, council, as a friendly reminder, is not mandated to engage the committee prior to declaring the property surplus unless there is demolition to heritage features. Thank you. Nobody's suggesting that, Lori. Um, I think that now I can be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Ms. Chadwick is um, just reminding us that um, council does not have to consult the committee prior to, prior to declaring property surplus. Um, I, of course, my first motion would, um, uh, is based on a recommendation that council consider consulting the community before declaring this type of property as surplus. So we are trying to address that issue because we have a bylaw in the state that it currently is, um, she is right. What we can do is we can provide comments to council on the proposed sale. And I think that Steve started out his comments a few minutes ago by saying that we can recommend council sell, we can recommend that they not sell, or we can ask them to defer and uh, provide an opportunity to an organization, which we are calling Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse to see what they can do in a reasonable period of time. So um, just I think to bring us back to that conversation, are there any motions that people would like to make and that we can entertain on this issue? I would move option number three. To defer. Yes. Okay, so motion on the table, moved by Richard, that um, the committee recommend that council defer sale of the property until such time as a, an organization um, tentatively called the Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse have an opportunity to review their option to, to, to uh, organize and to review um, their options. Is there a seconder for that motion? Uh, Steve, Steve will second it. Okay, and discussion of that motion then. Phil. I'm through your chair. I, I'm fine with the deferring, but I don't think it. we should kind of give the, as we've sat on this um, uh, Friends of Colchester for a couple of years now, because we've, it's been up and just no one's ever taken the, the stab at it. Uh, giving that organization, if the, members or the people who have spoke tonight are planning on doing that give them like a month maybe two months to uh, go to council and have their say because I, I don't think it should be a never-ending deferral from us right so that's just my thought okay and i think that how long council gives them is really up to council whatever is reasonable in their eyes um but um i think we can probably be um, uh, not necessarily be specific on that just I think we can just say um, just mention that we want to give them an opportunity Steve I saw your hand yes and and I agree I it's in to me it's 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 more than just that it's it's a uh, an opportunity uh, to take a step back for everyone to look at this through the eyes of of the historical nature of, of the park. Uh, I think there's, there's, uh, there is no rush 
uh, to make this. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to speak on behalf of the developers. Um, people come forward; they've got an idea, they've got something they're looking to do, and they will present that on Monday to council. Uh, I know that some councillors uh, don't really have a good uh, feel for the importance of the schoolhouse. Uh, I'm fortunate to have moved out to Colchester and uh, I love the village and I spend all of my time there. Um, some people only get out here uh, once or twice in a year and don't understand really uh, how much it means. So it gives an opportunity for the people that have been emailing us, the people that have been calling us uh, to really have an opportunity to make their case heard and give us time to, to think on it. Now this may uh, only only defer till the following meeting if that's how council chooses to go or they could defer further. But I think our our job as the, as the Heritage Committee is to request this extra time uh, to give this group an opportunity to make a case, not necessarily have it all fleshed out, not have their fundraisers put together, but to show a commitment, to show a group that is out there that's prepared to work. Um, and, and council will give them as much time as they decide to give them if they take this reservate uh, recommendation. Tony? I'm in agreement with, uh, with Phil and with Steve. Uh, I think we should let council know that we think that uh, this is an important site in our opinion and that uh, they should give the local residents uh, uh, a few months to kind of develop a plan for the, uh, the property as to what some of the alternatives might be uh, to protect its uh, cultural heritage. So okay. I'm in agreement with, with Phil and Steve have both said. I'd give them six months. Okay. Very Up good. to. So am I correct that we have a motion on the table? Um, the motion to defer, including giving the friends of a potential pro, uh, organization called Friends Colchester Schoolhouse an opportunity. Uh, and it has been seconded. Am I correct on that? Procedurally? Yeah, yes, Steve. Uh, I think uh, we, we talked about those the most discussed the motion, but we didn't actually make the motion. Okay. Um, so, and I, I would, I'm going to make a motion uh, just because uh, I know what I had thought out here and I don't want to add timing. I'm going to recommend that the um, Heritage Committee recommend to Council that we defer the sale of the property until others have had an opportunity to bring forward um, different ideas, including a Friends of Colchester Schoolhouse. I, I think we're going to make sure we're not being we're not we're, that we're inclusive and in, there you can't just say okay we're only going to allow one other group to come in and tell us what they think i think we need to just say we're going we are we're going to recommend you defer making that decision until such a time uh, others have an opportunity and that way it's it's open uh, and then council can decide what kind of timing they want to put on that so that's my motion Mad madam chair is that an amendment to the motion that's on the table uh, I don't believe there was a motion on the table, Richard. Um, I think we were just discussing the wording of it. So un well, unless I, I someone wants to... I made a motion and I understood that Steve seconded it. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I, I do apologize. Okay. Um, I'm just going to hop in here. Richard, you are correct. You did motion that the committee, um, you know, ask, uh, recommend to council that they defer the sale until um, you know, residents can prepare a friend of and so on and so forth. Steve, you did motion that. Uh, you were seconded on it. Then there was discussion. Um, and then Steve, you just did another motion, which would essentially be an amendment to Richard's motion, just saying instead of making it just friends of, it would be um, any uh, different ideas, including. Okay, well that's, that's, what I wanted, that's what I wanted to clarify. 
Okay. There you, you, can't, can't, you can't entertain another motion when there's a motion on right. the table unless it's an amendment. Yes. Yes. Well, Richard, I don't have a, I don't have a vertigo problem, but I do have a blood sugar problem, and <laughs> my my attention span is about to get really really low, so I couldn't remember if there was a, a motion on the table or not. So, if are you in agreement with stay uh, with Steve's small amendment to your I motion? Am, I am in agreement with Steve's amendment. Okay, okay. so I'm going to call the vote. All in favor? on the amendment of that motion okay and uh richard i assume you are in favor and uh, no opposed so that motion is carried Lori. yes tony just a general comment it would make some sense in however we present this to council that maybe we provide some preamble with respect to how important we think this site is or is that something we can communicate through uh, steve who's a member of our committee yeah. yeah. Well, I think we can probably both do it. Yeah. Um, I I am on uh, council's uh, agenda. I have put in a delegation request. I assume that I, I haven't received anything back from them, but I assume that I'm going to be speaking to them on Monday to present these motions that we're passing tonight and to speak on the historical significance of the property. Ms. Bray, did you want to say? You are uh, confirmed. I am confirmed, Lori. Yeah, I did see you on the agenda. It was just oh. published uh, this afternoon, late this afternoon. Okay, super. Thank you so much. Any other comments, uh, Steve? Yes, thank you. Um, actually, if if we're all done with that uh, particular motion, I would like to uh, bring another motion uh, to this meeting that fits in with talking about the schoolhouse. At this time, the schoolhouse property is listed, but is not registered. And I think that we should take the next step and have the schoolhouse registered um, as a heritage building. Uh, so I would like to bring that before the committee and see if there's an uh, uh, appetite for doing that. And then check with uh, uh, Ms. Jabour about what we need to do to go forward with that. Okay. so. Steve, your motion would be that we recommend it, that council proceed with um, registering the property as a uh, designating the property is what it, what we would be doing. Yes. So first, I don't want to make that motion yet. I'd like to hear from uh, uh, Ms. Jabour as to what the process would be and then see if everybody has appetite to go through it. Sure. Okay. Rita? the chair in order to designate a property we would have to forward a recommendation to the council recommending that they initiate the notice of intention to designate um, i would have to prepare a report with contributions from the committee on the reasons why we feel that the colchester schoolhouse um, is a designate for the candidate for designation and um, we have to follow the provincial criteria. So in terms of the Colchester Schoolhouse, we know it has contextual value. We know it has architectural value. So we'll look at that more in depth and um, maybe forward at the next uh, Heritage Committee meeting for consideration. And uh, once, once the council receives that, they can, they can choose to decide whether they want to initiate the designation process or not. If they decide to initiate the designation process, it will be publicized in the local papers and um, it will be publicized for 30 days, during which period anybody can file an objection to that notice, and after which period the council may wish to um, refer the objection to the Conservation Review Board. Um, there are some amendments being made right now to the Ontario Heritage Act, which would mean that there might be lengthier timelines for them to make a decision and different bodies that might handle an appeal like the local planning appeal tribunal but going off of what i know it goes to the conservation review board and uh and they'll determine whether um whether the objection is uh, or council make their decision and that appeal can be made and they'll determine whether um the designation is warranted or not so we'll begin with a recommendation Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Rita. Steve, do you have questions of Rita? Oh, that's good. Okay, Phil, I see your hand. Rita, would this, if um, it was designated, would that tie some of the hands of any interested parties um, in their, maybe their plans or, or uh, direction they want to take the property, whether it's the friends of Colchester or another group or the developer? So through the chair, in the designation bylaw that council will pass, um, they will have to identify what the heritage attributes of, of that property is. And um, it may just be the building itself and the original features from 1881. So if I'm using Mr. Lewis's and uh, Mr. Flynn's uh, proposal, they would have to um, ask council for their permission to demolish um, th those, those features that are currently existing but council would be consulting with their heritage committee and um, they would be looking for a recommendation from their heritage committee on whether any of those features are culturally significant and uh, whether the demolition proposal is gonna affect any heritage attribute of that property. So they, they would have to go through the proper channels, the proper channels being council and uh, such proposal being vetted through the heritage committee. Thank you. Thanks, Frida. Okay, any other questions related to um, designation? Are you looking for a seconder, Madam Chair? I'm sorry? Are you looking for a seconder? Um, Steve, I'm not certain that you have actually, uh, have you made the motion? No, so I will make the motion that we, uh, we, we, address council and uh, ask them to start the designation process. Second. Okay. Seconded by Richard. Long overdue. Any other discussion? If not, we'll call the question. All in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Richard, I didn't hear you. <laughs> I'm on board. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other matters that um, members of the committee would like to discuss? Nope. Okay. If not, um, I think we can move down to adjournment. Um, before we do, are you okay? I think we're ready to, we've got a mover already. Um, <laughs> so I will attend council on Monday and I will bring forward um, uh, the, these uh, recommendations that we have and I will give them a history as well uh, of, of the schoolhouse so that everyone is fully apprised. Um, but I would also like to tell everyone that this committee meets every uh, on the last Thursday of every month. And uh, so um, our next meeting is on January 28th at five o'clock. And of course it is on Zoom. So if I can, uh, Phil, I think you're ready to move that we adjourn. A seconder, can I get a seconder? I see both Tony and Steve and the meeting is concluded. Thank you very much to everyone who attended. I see we still have 37 participants on, uh, well. online. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your input. Appreciate it. Yes, very much so. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good evening. Hey, good night. Good night. Hey, good night.